When I recently walked into Philadelphia's Center for Art in Wood, two men were installing a dazzling exhibition, the likes of which I had never seen before. Shadow of the Turning is the result of the collaboration of a writer, curator named Kevin Wallace, and a remarkable artist, originally from Vietnam, named Ben Pho. My life has actually changed from my young childhood, born during the war, go to college, and then the war ended. And I spent about four years trying to escape out of communists and live in educational camp, or we call it prison, under communists. And then after four years, I escaped and I come to America. Go back to school and live an American dream. Shadow of the Turning is not only a traveling exhibition, it is also an illustrated novel. My name is Kevin Wallace. I am director of the Beatrice Wood Center for the Arts in Ojai, California. And in 2006, I curated an exhibition about Ben Foe's work and wrote a book, The Story of His Life. Following that, we discussed doing another collaboration together. The result was Shadow of the Turning, which is a fictional work, but it runs along the same formula that we discovered while working on the first book, having to do with destiny and life. It's really an experimental work taking an artist working in a craft media and creating something that tells a narrative and conceptual story. We were playing with the idea of these centuries of illustration, but in this case, they're three-dimensional works, which when photographed, come across really wonderfully as two-dimensional and design representation. This exhibition really mixes up genres. It explores a new approach to this field because it's connected with pop culture in a very strong way. A lot of the imagery could be timeless or ancient, but then all of a sudden I see an electric guitar. Yes, because the story is about from the past to the present. Some of the characters in there collect ancient Chinese weapons and kimono, but also there's a few teenagers in the story, and one of their dream they want to become a rock star. He's watched every fantasy adventure movie with his kids over the last 15 years. Yeah, my kids, exactly when they were younger, they loved sci-fi, they loved Pokemon and all that name. So most of the name in the book, they think about the name and they gave it to me, and we're using that name in the book. <laughs> <laughs> One of the coolest things in the story is the presence of winged figures known as Galcondor. Each human in the story will have a thing called Galkanda. They can review themselves so you actually can see them and just you can talk to them like a person. The Galkanda will stay with you until you're 40 and then they will switch. At 40 years old, we normally change our state. You know, like midlife crisis, we change our personality a little bit too. If you do know the story, you can find little hints and revelations throughout the exhibition. You don't necessarily need to know the story. Any of the pieces stand on their own. The incredibly detailed paintings on the surfaces of these works are done by Ben. He told me about his becoming an artist. I think I was in the eighth or ninth grade. There's a street artist named Dark Wing, and he's not a very well-known nationwide, but I keep looking at his painting and then he one day he decided to show it to me. Every day after school, I stop by his studio. Actually, it's not really a studio. It's a little shed that he got canvas everywhere and then we started painting together. That was one of my early childhood benefit experience, yeah. Ben, your work is so extraordinarily beautiful and complex. How did you start making sculptures like this? Well, I start out wood turning, so at first I just turn on a round circular form. Later on, I feel that when I do narrative work, introduce more story into the work, so I need more sculptural form. Ben told me that he has a large group of artistic collaborators from around the world who have helped him fabricate his sculptures. When we started out this project, I know that I never can do it by myself. I turned this project to a collaboration piece because I need help. The story involved about the tree of darkness and the tree of light. One of my artist friends in France, Alain Mayon. The tree of light, 
you can see that made by the Alain Mayon artist. So that's the tree of light. I immediately got him into making me the two tree. And then Joey Richardson, she's really masterful in wings. She made all the wings. You can see all the work done with butterfly or the galconda, that's her work. And then metalworking, Ron Good is the master of that. So he made all the jewelry and the weapons. Kay Khan, she made the kimono out of fiber. Patty Quinn Hill, she's a basket maker. I need a basket that represents flame and she have a beautiful way to making the flame basket. Ceramic here is um, Richard Flaw. Chow Gilson. What is that made out of? Wood. Wow. Yeah. And then numerous other help I need along the way with my studio assistants. And they all come to studio and help me and to try to complete this book. sound like a film director. You have all these people that are helping you achieve your vision. Have you ever thought about trying to make a movie? They want a Kevin dream. He really want this book to become a movie one day and that would be a dream come true for him. For me, I'm just having fun now to making all this, this artwork and try to describe the story. Does it have a happy ending? Yes, but I don't like to think of it as an ending because we set it up for a sequel. The idea, of course, is that Hollywood's going to buy it and we're all going to be fabulously wealthy and we'll just be living on an island somewhere writing sequels for many years to come. <laughs> have you been back to Vietnam? Yes, I've been back to Vietnam in year 2000, which is yeah, 13 years ago. 2000 with 1975, that 25 years later, it was very, very different. It's more crowded in the city, more pollution, I think, because everybody I saw, they were wearing masks while they're on the street. So it's really sad to see that. The building got older, the ghetto is still got really bad. But in the middle of the city, you don't see that. And there's so many street vendors that cover up a lot of things that I couldn't even recognize. You look about the age of a guy who might have been subject to the draft back in the Vietnam War days. I was just behind the age to be drafted, but I grew up idolizing hippies and that back to the earth movement. I really got that. When you look at the field of wood turning, that was reinvented by those people. That Vietnam War generation, that group that wanted to create their own world to get back to the earth. So it's interesting working with Ben Pho, who's Vietnamese and trapped in Saigon, and the connections because they were coming at it from different directions. One of the things that Ben and I found we had in common was an interest in Taoist philosophy. The idea of light and dark and the harmony of things. That's central to the new book. Normally in a fictional work there'll be a story of the battle of good versus evil, but in this story it's all about this balance between the two. When everything equal, black and white, you see the inside is black and the white, so the, the tree of the darkness and, and the good. So when they're all together, they balance. So you need to have a certain amount of good and bad together to make a human work. What's the bad in your life now? Are your teenagers lazy? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Well, actually it is. The teenager <laughs> and, you know, uh, how they can get go through college and what, who they could be married. You know, and all, all that normal thing there. Yeah. And then even the art itself is, is frustrating sometimes, right? And then things doesn't go right. It's always a bad thing. And, and the good thing is, like, this exhibition is a good thing. People enjoying the exhibition. People willing to funding me so I can continue to do this work. And I can't do this without my audience, which is my collector, you know, my friend. We all have to be in it together. Otherwise, 
I can't do it by myself. This is the reason for all the good and bad. It makes sense, trust me, that makes sense to you. <laughs> do you have a philosophy of life? You've obviously gone through difficulties in your life and you seem like a very happy person. Well, that's the key thing because if you know how struggling life is and now you do better, you enjoy it more. To me, if a person born rich never have a work, how they work in their life, they don't know how good they get, and that in turn that they are not really happy because they feel like that's the way it is. But when you're struggling to get through life, and now you get to where you really think is good, you always compare with what you had, and you feel happier. I found that we both believed in something that's sort of old-fashioned now, which is this idea of destiny. He looked at everything that he experienced and saw how everything was connected to where he ended up. Any one thing had gone differently, even the worst things that happened in his life, how he wouldn't be exactly where he is now and the man he is now. What do you want the viewer to experience when they look at your work? What I really want them to experience is three things. There's a lot of dream in my work, and most of the peacock feather represent dream, and magic, transformation, and live. Uh, live a full life, because after you dream, you need to transform your dream to the reality, and then after you've done that, you need to live it. Most of the work is around those three main things there. Well, you are a true inspiration, and your work is beautiful beyond words. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, John. Shadow of the Turning, the art of Ben Fo, will be on display at the Center for Art in Wood through January 18th, 2014.